Thank you for joining me. Let's study Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 through 22. Let's read together. For this, Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. To him also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Verse 4. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are, are of the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people, according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Verse 7. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. Even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Verse 11. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke, nothing concerning priesthood. Verse 15. And it is yet far more evident if, in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Verse 18. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weaknesses and unprofitability and profitableness. The law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And inasmuch as he was not made priest without an oath, for they have become priests without an oath, but he with an oath by him who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. That's Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 through 22. Read verses 1 through 3. Melchizedek is a mysterious Bible character, but this passage tells us a lot about him. In verses 1 through 2, what do we learn about Melchizedek? In verse 3, who does Melchizedek resemble? Read also Psalm 110, 4. Let's look back at verses 1 through 2. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. According to Genesis 14.18, Melchizedek was the king and priest of Salem, also known as Jerusalem. Salem was the city of Melchizedek, 
Because of many similarities, he is compared to Jesus Christ. He resembles Jesus Christ in many ways. This is called a theophany, a pre-incarnate appearance of God the Son. That means before he came to earth as a baby. What does the name Bekilzedek mean? Bekilzedek's name means my king is righteousness. See the chart below comparing Bekilzedek according to Hebrews 7 with Jesus Christ. Let's read together. Bekilzedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, met Abraham, blessed Abraham, king of righteousness, king of peace, without father, mother, genealogy, priest continually, great. And this is from Hebrews 7. Now let's look at Jesus. King of kings, great high priest, met Abraham, blessed Abraham, king of righteousness, king of peace, son, son of God, eternal priest, great. You can read the scriptures on your own. In verses 4 through 10, the greatness of Melchizedek is shown through his relationship with Abraham. In verse 4 through 6, what shows Melchizedek's greatness? As a priest, how does he compare to the Levite priests? Melchizedek's greatness is shown by the tithe of the spoils of war that Abraham gave him. As a priest, he also received tithes just like the Levites did. In verse 5, the writer talks about the Levites receiving tithes from their brothers. How was this intended to happen? You can read Numbers 18, 21 through 26 on your own. According to the Mosaic law, the Levites were priests from the tribe of Levi. Priests had to make offerings and sacrifices in the tabernacle for the sins of the Israelites. Since they were not given an inheritance in the land, they depended upon the tithes from the Israelites. Read verses 11 through 19, where the Levitical priesthood is shown to not be good enough because of its weaknesses. In verses 14 through 17, the author points out that Jesus is not a Levite. What tribe is Jesus from? Why is this important? Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. In fact, Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. This is important because it was prophesied by Jacob that Jesus would be the king over his people Israel. The prophet Nathan also prophesied to King David that his throne would be established forever. The only way it could be established forever is through the eternal king Jesus. And you can read the scriptures on your own. In verses 18 through 19, the writer discusses the law of Moses. What is meant by, there is an annulling of the former commandment? The word annul means to cancel. Thus, it can be understood that there is a canceling of the former commandment. This means that the former commandment no longer exists. Could the law make you perfect? What then was the purpose of the law? You can read Romans 3, 20, chapter 8, verses 3 through 4, chapter 10, verse 4, Galatians, chapter 3, verse 24. The former commandment means the law of Moses. Thus, Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross fulfilled the law. Only he could keep all 613 laws. The law should have taught the Israelites that they could not keep it because they were not perfect. Only the perfect lawgiver could keep it. Jesus is the only one. Thus, the purpose of the law was to point them to Christ. In verses 20 through 22, there is one more better element added to the priesthood of Melchizedek. What is it? You can read the scriptures on your own. 
Jesus is the better element. The guarantee is that Jesus is the great high priest, and he is all that is needed. The better covenant will be supernaturally put into Israel's hearts so that they will be empowered to keep the new covenant, according to Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 33. As Jesus becomes the king during the millennial kingdom, the Israelites will be able to keep the laws according to Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 through 27. Now we will look at Hebrews 7, 23 verse, through chapter 8 through verse 13. Let's read this passage together. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is able, also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Verse 26. For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Who does not need daily is those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who have weakness. But the word of the oath, which came after the law, appoints the son who has been perfected forever. Verse 8. Now this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law. This is chapter 8, verse 5 who served the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Verse 7 of chapter 8. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 11. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. In that he says, a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. We have just read Hebrews chapter 7 through 23 through chapter 8 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Read verses 23 through 25. What reason is given that Jesus is better than the Levitical priests? What advantage does he have? You can read Romans 8.34 and 1 Timothy 2.5 on your own. Jesus is better than the Levitical priests because he is eternal. The advantage that he has is that he lives forever because he's God. Jesus can save people from their sins 
and he makes intercession for them. As the mediator between God and humans, Jesus prays for us. In verses 26 through 28, what traits qualified Jesus to be such an excellent priest? As holy, harmless, pure, and sanctified, Jesus Christ is the only one who can be the excellent priest. Verse 28 mentions the word of the oath. What does this mean? You can also refer to Hebrews chapter 7, verses 20 through 22. The word of the oath is that the Lord has sworn that Jesus is the priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In chapter 8, verses 1 through 2, give us a summary of this middle section of Hebrews. What is it? The summary is that we have a high priest who is seated at the right hand of God. He is the minister of the heavenly sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. In chapter 8, verses 3 through 6, we see that Levitical priests had to offer gifts and sacrifices. What is the gift of Jesus, our high priest? See verse 6. The gift of Jesus is that he is our mediator with God. See verse 4, where is he currently doing his work? He is sitting on the right hand of God the Father, making intercessions for us. Verse 5 said that priests serve the copy and shadows of heavenly things. What are copies and shadows? You can read Exodus 25, 40, 1 Chronicles 28, 1 through 4, and verse 12 through 13 and 19. Copies and shadows are not the real things. Instead, they are duplicates or images of the real things. An example is that a teacher writes a lesson and she makes a copy of the lesson. The lesson that she wrote is the original. Her students receive copies of the original lesson. In the same way, earthly priests are images of the true high priest, Jesus Christ. Read verse 7. The Old Covenant, the Law of Moses, wasn't perfect. What was its main problem? You can also read Hebrews chapter 7, verses 18 through 19, and chapter 10, verse 1. The main problem of the Old Covenant was that it could not make the Israelites perfect. No matter how many sacrifices that the priests made for them, the Israelites' hearts were hardened. Verses 8 through 12 are a quote of Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, where a new covenant with Abraham's people is mentioned. Examine the I wills of this new covenant. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. See Romans chapter 11, verses 25 through 27 and Revelation 14, 1 through 5. According to verse 13, what happened to the old covenant? You can read Romans chapter 10, verses 3 through 4. The old covenant became void. This means no longer useful. Thank you for studying with me, Hebrews chapter 7 and chapter 8. I pray that this has been a blessing to you as much as it is to me. May God richly bless you.